Am I the butthole for refusing to have a pink bedroom again? Hi guys I am 15 female, my dad is 31 male, stepmom, Anna, is 29 female, and stepsister, Zoe, is 8 female. We are in the UK. I was born when my parents were just 16, and my egg donor did a runner before I turned 1, I don't know her now. Dad, well he did the best he could as a young single father, but we've lived in a small two-bed flat and not had much money for as long as I can remember. So dad and Anna married two years ago but stayed living in separate homes, as Anna was a carer for her disabled mum. Pre-COVID, I was out of the house a lot and never really cared much about my room which had childish pink walls with hearts on. During the first lockdown, I became quite down and unhappy and eventually decided to overhaul my room completely to feel more like me and spent some of my savings on paint and new sheets and stuff. I put grey on three walls and did a geometric design in shades of blue on the fourth. It's a lot more grown up and I felt a lot more comfortable spending all my time in my new space. Sadly Anna's mum passed away mid-January, at the end of February Anna and Zoe moved into our tiny flat, and I had to share my room with Zoe. I didn't complain about it, about half my small space now being toys, about suddenly becoming a full-time big sister. We had to swap my bed for bunk beds and because Zoe is afraid of heights I had to take the top bunk, I haven't even complained that I can no longer sit upright on my bed. We are going to move into a three bed at some point, but until then, this is the situation. I am not happy but accept it. But Zoe isn't happy and is too young slash immature, she's eight, I get it, to accept it. Zoe cries for her old room back. Anna wants to paint my beautiful new room back to the pink I use my own money to cover up, and I'm refusing to let her. Dad says he will pay to paint my room the same in the new house when we move, I say they can paint Zoe's room in the new house too. Anna is saying I'm being childish and nagging at dad to make me change my mind, but dad is stuck between us and privately says he gets it, that I've had to put up with so much, but won't stand up to Anna on my behalf. I've offered compromises, they can paint if I can take the bottom bunk and put curtains around it so I'm not surrounded by effing pink again, or leave it as it is and put pink curtains around Zoe's bunk so she is surrounded by pink. Both ideas got shot down as me being stubborn for the sake of it. I think I've latched onto my walls as the last bit of control I have and I don't think it's fair at all to force me to give every bit of my home up for Zoe. They didn't actually have to move in yet, and could have waited until we had the bigger house to merge our families. Basically I think Anna is being a butthole for having zero consideration for the fact she and Zoe have invaded my life, home, and room and that I put up with it all except for this. All my friends are on my side but I know they are biased. Not the butthole. Zoe being upset might have more to do with the fact that she lost her room right after her grandmother died. She went from living in a house just with her mother and grandmother to suddenly being in a totally different place with different people. She lost more than just a room. Painting your room pink isn't going to change that. Anna spent years caring for her disabled mother and moved out a month after she died. She might have had the time to process what was happening and thus was able to move on, but Zoe is 8. You and Zoe are also at different stages in life and this move seems to have not been very well thought out. They need to talk with Zoe to see how she's really doing. Crying for her old room is likely more about other things than just pink walls. You have put up with a lot of change and seem to be handling it very maturely. You shouldn't be asked to give up more when they are the ones who decided to move in together before everyone was ready. Hang in there, talk to your father about your concern for Zoe, remind him you are 15 and have given up your privacy, safety, you're going to hurt yourself if you get startled and sit up in the middle of the night, and some sanity for her. You took the time to paint your room so that you could feel better, taking that away is only trading something that made you happy for a possible band-aid for Zoe. This is the perfect answer. I agree. Consider letting Zoe paint one bedroom wall a pink of her choosing. This giving her back a sense of control. One pink wall can't be too bad yet when you look at it, you know you gave her that choice out of kindness. She can always paint the rectangle S, of wall that enclose her bunk. Add the pink curtains and some pink ambient lights and she has an adorable pink fort. Also, if there's a big enough closet, she can have a pink fort there as well. Zoe definitely needs to feel like some space is just hers, as Dos original poster. UK bedrooms actually rarely have closets. Really? That's weird. Is it because most houses are hundreds of years old or what? Where do you keep your clothes then? 
in wardrobes and chests of drawers. I love this idea. Did Zoe ask for a pink wall, or just for things to be as they were? Which means not sharing a room and being back in their old place. I think the parents are jumping to the conclusion that pink walls will fix Zoe. So is everyone commenting? A pink wall isn't going to do anything to make the situation better. Everyone here is just offering feel-good suggestions. The real problem is way more complex. So this situation happened to me. Literally. Long ago when we moved into our current house, it was around the time of my sister's birthday so my parents decided to paint her room as a gift. We were 10 and 11 at the time. I asked if I could also have my room painted, since we were going from a rental house and the walls in my room were white. Initially, it was a no but then they decided to surprise me with one pink wall. It was leftover paint from my sister's room they didn't want to put to waste. I didn't get to properly paint my room until two years later, and I chose tropical shades of blue and green that hurt their eyes. It was glorious. Hard agree. To me it sounds like the conflict is being entirely driven by Anna, from what has been written, it doesn't sound like Zoe has even specifically asked for pink walls. Yeah the complaint isn't even I want pink, it's I want my room. This isn't going to be fixed by painting the walls pink, because it's not her old room. We're talking moving an 8 year old into a shared room when she never had to before, she has to sleep in a bunk bed, with a much older new sister, when I was 8, a teenager was scarily old to me, she can't have her space like she used to, and that all goes for original poster too. This isn't going to be fixed by painting the walls a different color. This is missing the point. Zoe isn't crying for a pink bedroom, she's crying for her pink bedroom. The one in her old house where her grandma lived. I think a lot of adults react to grief like Anna did, trying to distance themselves from places slash things that remind them of the lost person. But for children it's the exact opposite. In times of major stress children, need stability and routine. Uprooting Zoe from everything that was familiar to her immediately after grandma's death is what is causing the distress. It's not about pink. Or the wall right behind her bed. Chalkboard pink paint, anyone. It'll lead to messy sheets but a small price to pay for giving Z a small amount of control. But yeah, this doesn't sound like it's about the pink walls. And I can't beat that answer. Not the butthole. Disagree, the wall color is not the real issue. Painting the walls will not actually fix or change anything. Just aesthetically, that suggestion makes me cringe in pain, worse than painting the entire thing pink. Maybe even just something fun for the area she is next to when she's in her bunk. You may be able to find quarts of paint that were mixed to wrong colors and thus reduced in price. I just want to add that we do not know if they really didn't have to move out just yet. It could be that they couldn't afford to keep her mom's place or they had to move because they weren't eligible to live in the house since the disabled person died so they might have lost certain benefits. I will say though that I am not in the UK so I might be wrong. If they were forced to move, Anna might not have processed her grief, lost her home of we don't know how many years and uprooted her also grieving daughter. She might just not fully realize what she is asking off original poster. Doesn't change the verdict, I agree original poster is not the butthole but there are a lot of emotional layers. Ops dad needs to step up more for her. In the UK if it was a council house for the granny then they would have a certain amount of time to move out after she dies. Unless the mum had been living there a long time too, not sure how long but there is a set time. This happened with my wife's granny when she had to go live in a home. I think we had four weeks to empty everything. But this was before the pandemic. Now it might be a lot more flexible. It definitely sounds like it to me. It seems like there were approximately six weeks between the passing of the grandmother and their moving in with original posters dad mid-January to end of February that would line up with the council housing rules. Maybe they couldn't find a three-bedroom in that time, or are waiting on the one they want to be vacated. Who knows? This is a good and empathetic answer. This but also. Did she have to also change schools with this move? Young children process moving as grief. So not only did she lose her grandma she lost her space, who knows what things had to be gotten rid of to fit the new space, she lost her bed too, she is grieving and sounds like the parents aren't knowing how to deal with that. Also, pandemic life has been hard for everyone, you seem to understand it well, but I bet an 8-year-old is just barely coping. 
I'm glad you have compassion but realize a lot of these decisions that were forced on you were forced on Zoe too. If you're going to compromise, which I don't think you should, maybe have one non-geometric wall painted pink or get some heart clings that are removable, make the adults who made these decisions pay for that and reimburse you for the paint you paid for initially as well, since they're going to change it. Try not to see Zoe as a butthole because she has as much say in what's going on in her life as you do. Also, if dad's saying that to you but not in front of Anne he may be telling him the same thing about getting it when you're not around. He needs to stand up for you and you all need to figure out how to make this blend work. I'm from a blended family, it's hard. Good luck. Yes, neither original poster nor Zoe are TA here. Both are doing nothing wrong by wanting their own bit of space they control after a time of significant upheaval. The blame's on the parents here, 100%. You, taking that away is only trading something that made you happy for a possible band-aid for Zoe. Parents, that's a sacrifice we're willing to make. This really is an amazing answer. Something similar happened to me, growing up, I shared a room with my sister, and my parents, sister and I could never agree on a color scheme for the room. They wanted either blue or pink, and I hated pink, the room was already pink, and I was surrounded by blue all day every day in the rest of the house and at school, where I was being bullied, so the color developed very negative connotations. We talked about my choices, like red, purple, gray, black. But I literally came home one day and my room was pink again. So this autistic teenager lost her crap and started tearing off whole chunks of wallpaper. I put posters up. Naturally, I was punished severely for this. But I didn't go out anyway. I didn't have friends. So I lost nothing. I was forced into the bottom bunk by my sister. I'd have had more headroom at the top, but the bottom of the bed didn't cover the springs that helped support the mattress above. So if I woke up with nightmares, as I often did, they'd rip out huge chunks of my hair, and cut my head. Nobody cared. I hope your folks do. Definitely make them wait until the move, and have them get Zoe into some kind of therapy. It is out there for kids. Not the butthole. Not the butthole you do have the right to keep a small sense of your old room. You sound like you understand and are trying your best to be mature about losing all of your privacy. And I am impressed by that especially since you are all so young. But I do have an idea. Gray and pink look great together. Maybe you and your sister can take the fourth wall and instead of the blue geometric pattern, could it be grays and pink? It might be a nice bonding things to do together and it would give her a sense of ownership of the room also. Then maybe you could shop for new quilts. Hers could be pinker, yours more gray. I also love your solution of the curtains. What a great way to make one room feel more like you have some privacy. Could you put them on the top bunk somehow? You definitely need a place to escape to. Original poster replies. I really don't want to change my wall, it legit took me two weeks just to finish it, but I've just thought we could do the opposite wall the same but in pink, thanks for the suggestion slash inspiration. Yay! I am so proud of the level of maturity and compromise you are showing. Your dad has done a great job raising a lovely young lady and hopefully your sister will enjoy the process. Want to bet stepmom still says it's not enough for her. That would really make me mad. This girl is trying so hard to compromise and look at things from everyone else's point of view. Yeah, but so far, every compromise has been shut down. I'm willing to bet stepmom wants everything catered to her child and isn't willing to compromise on anything. Op should talk to Zoe first and get her buy-in, and then go to the parents. Harder for Anna to say it isn't enough if Zoe is saying she wants it. Yes, this idea. If Zoe likes it, Anna has no choice but to like it. And chances are Zoe will like it if it's put to her as if she gets to design it herself as well. This is my thought. Getting Zoe excited is going to make it hard for Anna to really have a reason to say no. Like let's say Zoe and original poster decide to make Zoe's bed her sanctuary, or set up a little fort in the corner for her, space permitting. Pink fairy lights, pink satin sheets, cheap enough to find but pure luxury for a little kid, one of those faux fur pink rugs? Nothing too expensive, but stuff that Zoe can have as hers and can take to the new home. What can Anna say then? Zoe doesn't want pink walls and nothing else, she wants her old room. 
Getting her excited about creating her own little space and into planning her new room at the new house is going to do worlds more than slapping on pink paint and doing nothing else. Then stepmom can get effed by a cabbage. This young woman offered three compromises. SM gets to pick one or she gets nothing. Do why would they paint a room anything if they are moving soon? That doesn't make sense seems like a waste of time and money. I don't think they're moving soon. They're moving eventually. First, they have to find a place they can afford, then put a bid on it, wait for everything to clear, and then they can move. This could take over a year. Especially right now with the housing market being insanely expensive. I got lucky and was the only person to view a house the first day and the guy took my offer that night. The previous house I tried to put an offer on had multiple clash bids 150% of asking price. I think it depends on where you are. A lot of people have fled my city since COVID started, since a lot of people are working from home and want cheaper rent and more space now. More vacancies and lower rents than we've seen in a long time. I think next suggestion original poster should make is to paint her dad's and Anna's room screaming pink and put a bed in there for Zoe. It's just walls after all. And if adding an extra bed is too difficult, then Zoe and original poster can continue to share room at night, so Zoe can have her play stuff in the parents' room. This is fiendish but brilliant. That's honestly the part that makes me think they aren't very serious about moving, at least not in a reasonable amount of time. I kind of get the impression it's just a long-term future dream. Sometimes looking at what's available, but never finding something that satisfies them. When they finally find a home, original poster will be, almost, off to college, and she'll have to sleep in the beige guest room. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.